So here we are. Um, I like to talk about tunneling through a single barrier. Um, in the outline, uh, we'll be looking at analytical solution to this and then uh, have some uh, numerical observations from, from, the, from the solutions here. And then we'll expand to multiple barriers down the line. All right, so if I'm interested in a transmission coefficient through a structure, really what I like to know is I inject a wave here at A with an amplitude 1. I'm interested in what comes out at the end of the structure here with an um, uh, amplitude E. The transmission is actually defined as the square magnitude of E square over A, A or E over A magnitude square. Because in principle, this could be a complex coefficient. And that corresponds to a specific matrix element here in this uh, transfer matrix M. So that's the 1 over M11 magnitude square. All right. So you can do a lot, a lot of um, um, analytical push-ups and carry this calculation through. That's a very good exercise to do to make yourself familiar with some of the math that's in the system. And you can uh, uh, basically calculate analytically two separate solutions. One for electrons that are uh, injected below the barrier, right here. And then another solution when the electrons are coming in above the barrier. We'll discuss the solution um, for electrons in the um, case of being below the barrier first. So the expression you get here looks reasonably horrendous. It depends on uh, hyperbolic sine square. And um, a hyperbolic sine has components of exponential decay in it. So that might sound familiar because we started with a solution of electrons that are decaying in the barrier. Um, it is governed by a uh, barrier length L and by the decay length gamma. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, it is interesting that uh, the maximum of this transmission can be 1. And uh, what you have here is 1 over 1 plus something. And if that something gets small, then you have a coefficient that can be uh, uh, close to 1. All right, so now let's look at this uh, um, in, in a couple of limiting uh, cases. So let's assume that gamma L is large. So that would mean it's a strong barrier, either strongly decaying, uh, so meaning it's very high, it's a very high barrier, or maybe L is large, so it's a very thick barrier. Then you can uh, get an uh, approximation to the exact expression above, and you obtain something that depends exponentially to gamma L, minus 2 gamma L, and it has a coefficient up front. So here, very explicitly, uh, the transmission decays with barrier length L, and through gamma, it decays with a bar uh, barrier height V0. So very clear uh, and kind of intuitive that the transmission um, is de exponentially dependent on this. Interestingly, again, there is tunneling. Electrons can be transmitted through this barrier. And here's a plot of this. What you see is that uh, uh, a, a result of a tool we have on NanoHub, and you'll be doing some exercises with this tool. And plotted here uh, is on the left the barrier of a specific um, specification, so it's a 1 eV tall barrier, and we're plotting the transmission on a logarithmic scale. Now, uh, the first observation you have is that um, on this log scale, you'd like to have the value of transmission equal 1 is here is on the far right and this uh, plot shows that the transmission at the barrier at the top of the barrier is not 1 in fact it's roughly a factor of 10 smaller so classically 
uh, we would have perfect transmission above the barrier and no transmission below the barrier. And quantum mechanically, we see now that actually you have not even perfect transmission above the barrier and you have transmission below the barrier. Now, there is a dependence on the length L. So I'm plotting this here explicitly. I'm In this tool, I just made the barrier uh, width L longer. And you see two things in this plot. So I'm comparing um, the result from a thin barrier with a thin blue line and the uh, result from a um, thick barrier with a th uh, thick blue line. You can see two things. Number one, the exponential decay under the barrier is much stronger if you make the barrier thicker, just like what the expression says. So, so really you see the coefficient really here moving into this direction quite a bit as you make the barrier thicker. But you also see that the coefficient is uh, below the barriers also um, uh, st more strongly attenuated. So again, you see not perfect transmission at the barrier height um, um, of one. And uh, the effect is getting stronger as you make the barrier thicker in this case. All right. Now, we can look at a, a slightly different limit. We can look at the limit of a weak barrier. Uh, that's another nice case you can do analytically in a structure like this, where you said gamma L is much less to one, much, much less to, uh, than one. That means you can do a, a different approximation in, in the expansion here to the hyperbolic sign. And basically you end up uh, with an expression that is of a Lorentzian form as you see here. So it's basically 1 over 1 plus some, some quantity squared, and that's called a Lorentzian. And interestingly enough, this Lorentzian decays with a barrier width, and as we said, it's a sort of a weak barrier. Uh, it lost it, its dependence on the uh, barrier height, so it's purely the barrier width. Okay. Now, Let's look at the case uh, where we're looking at transmissions uh, above the barrier. So the result, the, the ex uh, exact result here is again shown at the bottom for the case where the electrons are injected below the barrier. And now we're going to look at case here where the electrons are injected above the barrier. All right. So also here you can get an exact solution. And it's somewhat symmetric in its shape. Um, to the solution um, that we have below the barrier, but you basically replace the hyperbolic sign by a sign, and you replace the attenuation coefficient gamma by the propagation coefficient k2 for region 2. Okay, So before we had a gamma that's being attenuated in the barrier, now we replace that with a different propagation constant. So, K2 is, in a sense, minus I K gamma. Right? Now, you can simplify the expression above, uh, or rewrite it in a, in a slightly different form, and see now you have a sine squared at the bottom uh, of the expression, so in the denominator. So, overall, you see that the transmission is 1 over 1 plus something. So that tells you that there are cases that the transmission is not 1. So, uh, and there are cases when this term here is 0, then you achieve perfect transmission. So there seems to be something interesting that is now depending on the energy of the system, because that's the propagation K2 that uh, depends on the energy of the electrons and the length of the barrier. So there's some interesting feature in this expression. So it seems to indicate that the transmission is actually oscillating above the barrier, which is very different from a classical view where you would have perfect transmission above the barrier uh, and nothing interesting really above the barrier. So in this case, here that I've shown before of a thin barrier, you see number one, the transmission above the barrier is not perfectly 
reaching 1. It's reaching 1 at a specific energy up here that is way above the barrier. And then it seems to be going down again. So the transmission oscillates above the barrier. It becomes a bit more visible if you make the barrier thicker. So now, uh, as I've shown before, the decay under the barrier is much stronger. But you also see multiple peaks in the transmission. And uh, there's oscillations of the, tran uh, of the uh, transmission above the barrier. And uh, these uh, are related to the uh, length L of the barriers. Okay, so let's look at this more carefully one more time and also plot not just the transmission but the reflection coefficient which is 1 minus t. All right, so we see that if the transmission is perfectly 1 then the reflection is 0 and on a logarithmic scale you see this horrendous uh, deep dip, right? It, it really points nicely to uh, the reflection being one, uh, a reflection being zero. So you have to be cautious uh, about uh, resolving these expressions well and when you're plotting them. Um, obviously if you take a log of a function you have uh, that could be zero, you have to be cautious. But this also shows that this numerical code is resolving these resonance-like features quite well. And the tool, again, is this uh, tool on NanoHub. It's called PCPBT. Um, and you'll be doing some exercises with this tool. Now, if we look at the, the fatter barrier, the thicker barrier, uh, and look at the trans uh, transmission as well as the reflection coefficients, you really see resonance-like features in this. And you see that these resonances are not equally spaced, but they're spaced according to a sine square function here. All right. So this uh, resembles a little bit of, a, uh, of that of like a, a bound state that is above the barrier. And we've discussed bound states in, in square wells. But you can also imagine almost like a square well that is sitting here that is doing uh, some sort of modification of the transmission coefficient as well. These interferences above the barrier actually modulate the transmission. All right, so these are the numerical observations we've uh, seen, uh, we can see on a single barrier structure. And uh, I gave you uh, analytical solutions. I invite you to, to duplicate and calculate those solutions as an exercise. And uh, in the next uh, segment, we'll talk about a double barrier structure like this and um, study, study its effects there. So thank you.